Awesome. Well, hi, everybody. Um, gl very glad to be here. Thank you, Ron, for inviting us to this uh, webinar. Um, Rashid and I uh, are going to talk about building success with generative AI. Uh, quick introduction about myself. I've been with Microsoft a little over two decades. I'm currently uh, part of the what we call as the Microsoft AI Global Black Belt team. Um, Rashid is um, also my esteemed colleague, and uh, I'll go ahead and have him introduce himself as well. You're on mute, Rashid. So yeah, I'm actually much newer to Microsoft than Farah. Uh, I've been with Microsoft for about, I think, eight months now, maybe 10, somewhere in there. Um, prior to that, I came from Meta. Uh, prior to that, I was at uh, AWS uh, for AWS IoT. Um, you know, I've been I've been working on machine learning uh, at the edge for a number of years prior to uh, joining Microsoft, and I'm really excited to be here with Ron and the rest of the folks at uh, AngelBeat. So, yeah, awesome. And uh, yeah, so today, um, just kind of to give you a high level overview, uh, we're gonna just talk about uh, the building blocks of generative AI. Um, Azure AI, Azure AI Studio, and then my colleague Rashid here is gonna talk about all the new enhancements and features that were announced and built. So without further, uh, you know, uh, we wanna just jump in real quick. Um, this is a very important um, area for us, uh, first and foremost. So we wanna emphasize how highly we value our customers' trust. Um, the role of data in AI uh, is is by far one of the most important conversations that we're having on a day to day basis with our customers. Um, so when you you know partner with Azure AI, uh, please know that you can count on your data privacy, security, and compliance across the board. Um, and knowing that your data is always your data is central to everything else that we want to share today. Uh, I'm not watching the chat, so if there's any questions or someone wants to come off of mute, uh, let's keep it interactive um, and just let me know. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and proceed. Um, here, just wanted to um, give the audience um, a sense of really um, how we're dogfooding our own um, products, right? So Azure AI is sort of central to um, our portfolio of products that we have. Um, of course, Microsoft uh, Copilot um, is backed by generative AI uh, within our uh, organization, uh, including GitHub and uh, LinkedIn as well. So just kind of wanted to give you all a sense of how we are constantly pressure testing um, our own products for the highest performance and efficiencies at scale. Um, so over here, um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the many exciting use cases that are popping up within the industry and uh, where we continue to see uh, the most frequent asks in terms of um, you know, how our customers are generating uh, or, or our customers are leveraging generative AI. I'm not gonna go through each one, but just wanted to give you all a sense of what are the common scenarios that are out there um, a lot of it is around uh, employee experience and addressing customer pain points. Uh, this is my favorite slide. Um, it, it really, in no matter what your use case is, um, you should be confident that Azure AI has you covered. Um, so in the portfolio, especially uh, the portfolio encompasses what we call as our portal. And I'll go into the demo here a little bit and talk about um, the Azure AI Studio, uh, but in, at, at a high level, just wanted to give you all a sense of um, what the different models are. Um, Rashid will talk about some of our models that went GA last week at Build, um, and I'll demonstrate some Azure AI services, particularly search and speech, uh, to kind of give you a sense of how AI Studio brings all of those features um, to you to be able to build a successful generative AI prototype and a POC. Um, and then kind of to give you a sense of Azure AI Studio, all you have to do is go to ai.azure.com and get started. Um, in here, uh, so how do how do we implement generative AI, kind of the building blocks that I talked about? Uh, so I want to break it down into four core dimensions here. 
Um, you evaluate your models carefully. So you definitely want to have a good understanding of your different models uh, and which one's appropriate for your use case. I'll walk through the benchmarking feature um, that is available uh, to you today uh, since Azure Studio AI Studio went GA at build last week. Um, number two, in terms of best generative AI experiences, you wanna um, you wanna also make sure that um, your data is uh, is ready and uh, you know as you uh, ground your data with the LLM, uh, your experiences in terms of your outcomes with your generative AI applications is going to be even greater. Um, and then in this case, I just wanted to kind of talk about what are the building blocks uh, within the application um, development as, uh, in and of itself. Um, you all might have heard of what is called as uh, RAG, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Um, so a couple of things to remember within Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG, in short, is um, it it is the... It is the best way you can bring uh, the best information or the right information to your users, right? So you're grounding your LLM with your business data. Um, since we all know that LLMs are are only trained on public data, um, so the motivation of grounding is um, essentially, you know, bringing in your business data and using prompt engineering and also the features around vector search. Um, and the different uh, options that you have within vector search. And I'll talk a little bit about that as I demo it um, to, to really ensure that uh, your data is well grounded with the LLM and the LLM is, is receiving the right prompts to be able to give you the most optimized results. Um, this is just sort of a overview of uh, what a RAG pattern or solution architecture looks like. Um, important things to remember is, you know, with the enhanced AI search today, uh, you, uh, the AI studio itself is bringing you um, the capability of vectorizing and also embeddings um, within AI search uh, to be able to ground your data and then feed that into your LLM. So um, you are getting um, the, the right prompts being fed to the LLM of your choice and getting the most optimized output. Um, so in terms of uh, what is embeddings, um, these are, you know, essentially with embeddings, you're using uh, another model and uh, it's, it's called embeddings ADA. There's there's a couple of releases that came out to build as well, but just to remember that it there is a, um, a model that you need to pick as you, uh, you consider embeddings as part of your rack pattern. Um, and then something to also remember at a high level, I won't go into detail, is vectorization um, and really what uh, vectorization um, offers in terms of making sure that uh, uh, your data is uh, is ready uh, in terms of providing the prompts to your uh, model. Um, this is uh, just a high level, um, and I'll show this in the in the portal itself. So I'm going to jump through in the interest of time um, and kind of go right into the demo. So let me just uh, uh, stop sharing here so I can go into the portal and uh, show you a quick demo. Awesome. All right. So this is um, AI Studio at a glance. Um, uh, essentially, you know, uh, it, it gives you options to set up your different projects. You have your model catalog. Uh, Rashid's going to talk a little bit more about the um, small language models as well as GPT-40 that's available to you. I mentioned model benchmarks, so I would uh, absolutely encourage you all to go in and explore this um, and really understand how this can uh, provide you with the necessary information you need around model selection. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna jump real into the demo itself. And I've sort of prepared uh, my environment. I have a data set. So um, one of my favorite restaurants in Dallas is called Uchi. What I've done is pulled up Uchi's menu and some other options that they provide, uh, which is really my grounding data for the LLM. Um, and I'm gonna jump right into uh, kind of giving you an idea of really how you can ground your data with your LLM. In this case, I'm using GPT Turbo 3.5. Um, I've already indexed my data. Um, so Uchi index is uh, the index and I'm going to pick 
um, hybrid per semantic uh, to make sure that uh, my LLM gives me uh, the results that I'm looking for with reference to the grounded data. So in this case, um, I would uh, I want to know what are my daily specials. And I've essentially instructed my LLM to only pull up data from the, um, the PDFs that I have to offer. So it gives me um, some really good options based on the data I've provided it. Um, another feature that this restaurant has is uh, tell me more about Uchi Home, where they actually provide you with a, a chef and the chef can come over and build your menu and help you um, with any events that you have. So this will tell me, um, this is, Uchi home. Yeah, so essentially it goes back and it pulls up all of the um, essential information around, you know, Uchi home. Um, the last thing I wanted to demonstrate is the text to speech. So I'm going to just quickly um, turn this on to kind of give you uh, a sense of how it works. Hopefully, my computer audio is turned on. If you all can, can't can hear, uh, just let me know. Um, but this will... What are my daily specials? Rashid has uh, some really good information to share around what's new. Um, so take it away, Rashid. All right. Um, well, thanks, Ron, and thanks, Farah. Uh, great demo, by the way, for showing us, uh, you know, quick little little workflow within uh, Azure AI Studio and how we could easily accomplish so much of the LLM uh, app lifecycle, right, within one comprehensive platform. Um, so we announced a, really a number of great services, features, and updates at Build 2024 this year. And I kind of wanted to just shine the light on, uh, in this webinar on a few of my favorites that surrounds Azure AI services. So next slide. So since March of this year and up to build, um, we brought a number of different models up to general availability in Azure in a couple of different regions. And some of these models includes the latest ChatGPT 4.0. Uh, the O stands for Omni or all, right, model. And the reason why it's called Omni is because it's a multimodal model, uh, meaning that it can take any combination of text, video, and audio inputs and generate any combination of text, image, and audio outputs. Um, GPT-4.0 is a little bit different from some of the other models in that it's got a 2K token limit, shared token limit, and you can uh, reach a maximum of 4K token limits. But some really great benefits uh, of 4.0 includes very low latency, so very fast responses, uh, really great model accuracy, and it's at a fraction of, of the cost of GPT-3.5 uh, Turbo. Um, you might have seen like a lot of these videos online. If you haven't yet, I absolutely recommend going on, you know, whichever video platform you want to, um, and check out some of the demos that are available out there for 40. It's, in my opinion, a truly delightful experience uh, to use. In addition to that, we also have uh, Phi three, which is a small language model, meaning that it's actually trained on us versus a large language model, uh, meaning that it's trained on a smaller data set. Uh, Phi 3 in this particular example is mainly trained uh, from textbooks. And so so this, so this we trained Phi 3 on textbooks, and we have a really like a couple of different variants of Phi 3, variants being different sizes. And these different sizes all across the board offer very high performance, very cost effective, but also highly capable. In math be benchmarks, for example, the Phi 3 mini and small and the medium versions they all beat out ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo in some of the popular benchmarks that are out there. Uh, Phi 3 Medium was actually also very close to 3.5 Turbo in code generation, and it just slightly outperformed it in language understanding, which is really kind of the critical reason why you'd use a language model in the first place. Uh, you can augment its understanding by, by using rag patterns, for example, and uh, supplementing that with what it understands. So it makes it for a really powerful cost-effective model, like I said. 
we also went GA with GPT-4 Turbo, um, which is uh, our text-based model. Um, and then GPT-4 Vision, which can do text and video, as well as DALI, which does image from text. And then lastly, uh, we went GA with Whisper, uh, which does audio uh, understanding and reasoning. Next slide. So this one I was actually like truly genuinely very excited about overall because I actually have a lot of customers that use the Assistance API and I'm personally a fan of it uh, in terms of just how quickly enterprise you can build quick uh, how quickly you can build enterprise ready copilots uh, using the Assistance APIs. So this powerful feature really revolutionizes the way that you create AI assistance. Uh, by providing custom instructions and using advanced tools such as the code interpreter, as well as custom functions. And for this year's build, we announced that we expanded the available tools for the Assistance API, which are now in preview, uh, starting with file search, where you can augment your LLM knowledge using your own flat files. And uh, file search has really incredible performance because it's able to parallelize your queries and can support a really impressive 10,000 files per assistant per second. Um, and then we also, as part of file search, we introduced uh, this vector store object within the API, which is really a game changer for building RAG solutions with minimal effort, because it actually does a lot of the taking your data, chunking it, converting to embeddings, uh, which can then be used by file search later on for you. Uh, it removes a lot of that overhead. So, Looking ahead, uh, we're actually built, bringing the ability to uh, bring your own index uh, to the file search tool, which supports data indexes in a number of different uh, uh, index databases and uh, index data sources, such as Azure AI Search, Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB vCore, tongue twister, um, Azure Blob Storage, Pinecone, Elasticsearch, and a whole bunch more. Um, in addition to that, our assistant's going to be, uh, our assistant's API is going to be able to browse the web as well. Uh, so you can get the latest information that's available on the web by using Bing. Um, we're also, uh, we also launched a number of different things or announced a number of different things on the security front. So we're in public preview for managing assistant outputs and token limits, which really gives you good control on your costs since uh, the cost for token uh, for models is based on token inputs and outputs. We're also launching uh, something called Prompt Shields, which provides protections against users uh, user prompts designed to like jailbreak what the rules that you've actually set in the system message. So, like, you know, if your system message says "be kind and don't curse" or something like that, um, you know, this helps protect uh, from someone violating that. Um, prompt Shield also provides additional safety against like uh, cross prompt. Uh, injection attacks, uh, uh, XPIAs, where you know a malicious set of instructions could actually be uh, embedded within a document that's being imported and parsed by the model. Uh, so it actually prevents that from being parsed by the model in the first place. Um, so that's a really powerful tool, I think, um, for security. Um, and then lastly, for security that I'm going to mention, not the last thing that we talked about for security overall, but um, what I want to mention today is uh, customer managed keys uh, support. Um, this is like a really great, uh, widely asked for feature with uh, the Assistance API. It really provides a lot of enhanced data security. It gives you a lot of control over your stateful entities and your files. Um, you can create your own keys actually using Azure Key Vault or some other third party vault or even a uh, HSM, a hardware secure module. Um, and use those keys within the Assistance API. Um, and then I'm just going to really quickly say that we, you know, expanded region availability and the number of models that we support across regions. Um, one of the notable ones that I want to shout out is Japan East, because we have so many Japanese customers that wanted to be able to use Assistance API, and now it's there. Um, so yay. Uh, so this is, this is just a short list of enhancements that we have to the Assistance API, and I'm going to try to run through as quickly as I can because we're, we're running low on time. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, Farah. So a really great feature that I want to talk about um, uh, is the new Azure OpenAI uh, Services Batch API, uh, which is available in public preview later this summer. 
starting with text only models. And then we're going to expand to cover embeddings and then vision support over the summer at some point. But the batch service provides really significant savings, 50%, uh, for workloads that don't need real time processing. So there's a 24 hour job completion timeline. It's really great for customers where they want to generate large corpus of outputs, but don't really need it to happen right then and there. Um, so you can save a lot of money by using the batch service. Um, excited about that. And next. So this is kind of indirectly open AI. This is actually um, within our Azure communication services. But you know, I think everyone kind of knows about WhatsApp a little bit. WhatsApp has over 2 billion monthly active users. Uh, it's a really powerful platform for connecting people with messages. And you know, now in preview through Azure uh, OpenAI service via the Azure communication services, um, messaging insights enables businesses to really get a lot of extra meaningful data from WhatsApp messages. So you get the capabilities of the Azure OpenAI models, and now you can use that to derive translations, for example, do language detection, uh, analyze sentiment, as well as intent uh, of what what customers or the agents are saying. And you could also, it could also be used to extract key phrases so that you could really try to optimize your business processes and also just overall improve that customer experience so you can delight your own customers. Next slide. So that's really all that we have to talk about in the time that we have. Um, you can go ahead and explore the rest of what we have to offer and try out Azure AI Studio, uh, like uh, Farah showed by going to ai.azure.com. Um, you could try out a lot of different models that we offer. It's not just the ones that we that I talked about. We have literally thousands of models, open source models as well, from Hugging Face, uh, Llama, from Meta, etc. Um, we have you know, all the things that you need to build your entire AI pipeline. We have responsible AI out of the box. And we, of course, have enterprise grade production uh, utilities out of the box and that can scale, such as security features and scaling features as well. Um, anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Um, I think if there's any questions, I, I don't know if we have any time, Ron, but uh, 